Why, hello there, children. Do you want to learn about Rutherford's gold foil experiment? Of course not, but too bad. Now, let's start this off by asking, what's the matter with matter? Well, matter is anything that has mass and volume. We tend to think of matter as occupying space, like solids or li or liquids or gases. But there is far more empty space than matter. In fact, most of the matter is empty space. Why? Well, the basic building blocks of matter, atoms, are mostly made of empty space. How do we know this? Before 1911, we didn't. The first concept of an atom was simply a solid billiard ball. However, Joseph John Thompson came up with another idea, the Plum Pudding Model. The Plum Pudding Model featured positive charges, or protons, stretched into a large soup of kinds. The negative charges, or electrons, would simply float around in the soup to give it an overall neutral charge. However, this model would not remain accepted for long. In 1911, a scientist from New Zealand named Ernest Rutherford decided to initiate a groundbreaking experiment involving the atom. He would shoot alpha particles at a very thin sheet of pure gold. Alpha particles are helium nuclei with a positive charge. Rutherford placed a sample of radium inside a lead box aimed at the gold foil. The foil was surrounded with a detector screen to show if it was hit by an alpha particle if it was deflected. Now, according to the plum pudding model, all of the alpha particles would pass right through the gold foil's atoms, or be refracted ever so slightly. This was because the positive charge of the soup was spread out so thin that it wouldn't be able to repel the alpha particle. When Rutherford actually performed the experiment, it mostly went as he predicted. The vast majority of the particles went through or refracted slightly as anticipated. However, less than 1 in 20,000 particles were deflected more than 90 degrees from their path. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but that wouldn't make any sense. The positive charges of the plum pudding model would have not been able to deflect them like that because it was all spread out. Rutherford famously said that it was like shooting a cannon at a piece of tissue paper and having it ricochet back at you. This completely broke the concept of the plum pudding model, so Rutherford proposed another atomic model. Rutherford reasoned that the particles that were deflected came into contact with a very small but very dense positively charged space in the middle of the atom, which he called the nucleus. This would account for the very few particles that were deflected. As for why the rest of the alpha particles went through, Rutherford reasoned that the rest of the atom was actually just empty space. This became known as the nuclear model of the atom, but it also raised many other questions. For example, how do the electrons move? Do they orbit, float around randomly, or just stay still? However, those are questions for next time. Now, let's do some review questions. First, what was the accepted atomic model before Rutherford's atomic model? It was the Plum Pudding model, where a positively charged C held a bunch of randomly moving electrons. Second, how did Rutherford's experiments help advance theories of atomic structure? Rutherford shot positively charged alpha particles at gold atoms. A very small percentage was deflected while the rest went right through, which led Rutherford to propose the nuclear model of the atom, where the positive charge was located in a very small but still dense nucleus, while the rest of the atom was just electrons floating in empty space. Finally, what was Rutherford's model called? It was called the nuclear model. And that's all for today, folks. I hope I don't fail this assignment because it is worth 10% of my grade.